hello, welcome to another episode of Jim's Open Garden. Okay, so a quick update on Ruby and Rhubarb. As you can see, they've got um, sort of quite big now. So what I'm going to do today is introduce them to um, the other chickens. Now, what I want to do is, is not disturb them too much whilst I do this. So what I'm going to do is um, just take out this end piece of wire here so that um, I'm not sort of taking out this entire structure and they'll be able to get in and out of, um, of, of their little pen if you like. So what I'm going to do is just take out these tacks out of this wire, take this wire out and then they can basically move in and out, introduce themselves to the other chickens and then um, they'll also be able to get back into where they're used to um, should they need to retreat away from the others um, for a couple of days and then I'll take the rest of this um, structure out. So that's basically what Ruby and uh, Rhubarb look like at the moment. As you can see they're um, fattening up quite nicely and um, um, you can see the other chickens are raring to meet them fully, so I'll take this um, wire out now and uh, introduce them to each other. Okay, so it's a bit later in the day, and they've had the um, they've had this section out here um, now for the most of the days. You can see this one's going in now. Now, with with chickens, there's always a hierarchy um, amongst the chickens, and these older chickens will most certainly um, have a bit of a pack and squabble with them. Um, it's nothing too much to be worried about. All you need to do is keep your eye on them um, during the first sort of 24 hours or so. So when I introduce them, I always do it um, during the weekend. And it is actually best to do it at night um, to you know to first introduce them. But uh, there will be a bit of um, you know there will be a bit of um, sort of hen pecking if you um, if you like until they've sorted out the you know who's boss and all the rest of it. And uh, that'll go on for a day or so, maybe two, two or three days at worst case. Um, but as long as they're not hurting each other, the best thing you can do is just leave them to it and let them fight it out. Um, and then they'll they'll become part of the brood, um, you know, and everything will be okay. But what it is important to do is to leave in like a structure like this, so they have got their own food, they have got their own water, so they can, um, you know, they can sort of retreat back into where they're used to. Um, as you know, a bit of a comfort blanket, and um, they can get away from the other chickens. Obviously, they can still, you know, the bigger chickens can chase them in there. Um, but um, and it's also, um, if you've got a smaller run than this, um, I would advise that when you introduce them, you introduce them, you know, on the lawn, you know, let them out on the lawn and stuff like that. Um, but um, you know, because I've got a reasonably large um, run here, um, you know, there's more than enough room for them all to get around and sort of move about and that. But, um, so that's the chickens introduced, and I'll, um, in the next week or so I'll take out this structure um, and then they'll be fully integrated into the, uh, into the brood. Okay, so a quick update on the greenhouse. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the Rainbow F1 tomatoes, we've had quite a few off already. Um, they're coming on quite well, and at the back here, I don't know if you can see, but there's some purple ones Get that leaf out of the way. There's some purple ones falling here, and there's just one in there you can't see between the branches. But uh, I'm I'm quite pleased with the uh, the amount of fruit that's on there. But as you can see, they're absolutely laden with with um, tomatoes, but they're they're not ripening quite as quick as I was expecting them to. Now with the uh, the money makers, the, the 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 fruits are really quite nice. Um, as you can see, there's some good um, fruit trusses there, full of fruit. Um, a, a lot of them have kind of sort of drips over like that which is not really a problem but none of them are ripening yet um, along here and you can see I'm not quite sure about this one this one's got these these funny shaped tomatoes on but this did come out of a money maker um, packet um, along with all the others so I'm not quite sure why this plant has got this shaped tomatoes on um, I'm, I'm guessing it's a different um, variety than um, 
than the money maker but anyway um, as you can see all the tomatoes are doing really well you can see these ones down here these are these are really nice ones down there there's one two three four five six seven eight nine nine really good sized um, tomatoes on that truss and there's plenty more trusses above it um, now none of them are ripening quite yet the other money makers um, but um, there is there is time yet now the way to encourage um, tomatoes to ripen there's two real things you can do. First one is to um, um, leave tomatoes that are ripening on um, on the plant as long as you can. Now, uh, what that will do is encourage others to ripen as well. So, don't be too keen to pull all the ripe tomatoes off because the the um, the tomatoes that are ripe uh, will cause the others to ripen as well. Um, obviously, the, the the reverse happens if you're going on holiday and you don't want any of the tomatoes to ripen whilst you're away, or you want to minimise that, then pick every ripe tomato out of the greenhouse, any one that's even slightly turning, and uh, get them out of the greenhouse. Then that will slow the uh, the ripening down. Um, the other thing you can do to encourage them to ripen is to put banana skins at, um, at the bottom. So if you eat, obviously when you eat bananas, put banana skins along the bottom of the. Um, on the ground or even hang them on the branches of the actual tomato plant and when a tomato when a banana um, decays it'll be giving out um, a gas which will cause the um, the tomatoes to ripen so that's another trick you can use as well now over on this side this is the side where we've got um, gardener's delight which is this one here and we've had quite a few of those already as you can see there there's quite a few ripening there and at the back and if you can see but there's a there's a there's two or three um, lots at the back there this is ripening. Um, I've already picked um, some completely off um, so some of the trusses I've completely stripped off now because they've, they've all ripened. This one here has just got this one really left at the end there then all of those have gone and that one at the back there there's got to be probably about half a dozen um, tomatoes on there ready to go. But the alicante um, has just started to ripen as well so as you can see at the back there I'll just zoom in for you um, there's a reasonable sized alicante at the back there that's ready to be picked um, but what, I've, what I'm doing is I'm leaving that on there again to encourage the uh, the rest of them to um, to ripen off. Now there's plenty of um, of the alicantes coming on. They're not quite as good as the uh, the money maker, to be honest with you. Um, but um, they are pretty good. They're good sized fruits, and uh, the ones at the top are obviously still developing. But uh, the ones at the bottom are you know a really reasonable size. You know there's plenty of plenty on there and as you can see they have drooped over a little bit um, but uh, they are a good size but I still think that the uh, the money maker um, I'm in mean, this trust down here that's uh, that's um, quite impressive really, to honest with you. Um, now there is there is one that I've seen um, where was it now? just here um, that's possibly the biggest one we've got so far so that one's probably about three inches across um, oh throw the leaves in the way um, that one there, that's about three inches across. That's a you know, it's a really nice sized tomato. So uh, the tomatoes are doing really well this year. Um, onto the cucumbers, uh, we've picked um, I think it's 11 cucumbers so far this year, which isn't quite as good as last year, but there are still plenty coming. As you can see, there's one there. Um, all the ones at the bottom pretty much have been picked now, um, and I've got more coming as you can see coming up um, here, and then um, this. This, this one here is um, not quite forming as well as I expected um, and uh, the one above it has sort of died off a little bit. Now this is, this is normally due to lack of water. Now what I'm thinking is as I'm watering at night um, I'm not quite getting far enough back to water the plants. Now it's, it's not rotted off at the bottom and as you can see uh, the actual plant itself is quite healthy. That's another runner off the same plant there. So down, you know, further down it's, um, you know, the plant's a lot healthier. But this main, this main shoot, as you can see, coming up at the back here, it's just one of the leaves that have died off. It. Um, this, this, this main shoot here seems to have died off. So this one here doesn't seem to be too, too healthy. But the end part, which is here, as you can see, seems to be a little withered. Um, so I think there's possibly something wrong with that particular runner. But uh, the others, nevertheless, are doing all right. As you can see, we've got two there. And this one that's running up this side here is also doing well. Um, I've got another um, uh, cucumber which is almost ready there, as we can see between the branches. So the cucumbers are doing well. And there's, there's a couple actually down further further down below, then if you can see, there's one or two there. 
uh, that need to be picked this week. But uh, the cucumbers are doing well. Not quite as good as last year. I think this time last year I picked about 30 cucumbers. So as I say, so far we've only picked 11 this year. Um, but uh, nevertheless, um, you, you know, different years uh, you get different results really. Now on to the chilies. Um, we've actually started picking the chilies. We've had um, quite a few off. Um, I think we've had about half a dozen so far and they are really hot. These are actually the jalapeno chilies, uh, which you wouldn't expect to be too hot, but these are quite quite hot to be honest with you. Um, we've had a few off this plant here, um, this bigger plant, and I've had, uh, I think it was this plant at the back here, I've had a couple off. Um, we've also tried the lemon chilli and that's um, equally as hot. But um, the, um, the, the jalapenos come highly recommended to be honest with you because they are a really nice peppery heat and um, They've, um, we've made, um, you, you know, we've eaten a few of these in the house, and um, they are really nice to eat. Moving on to the uh, ginger, um, the ginger's um, not a little bit stunted, to be honest with you. I'm not quite sure why. I'm, I, I don't know if it's um, not getting quite as much light as it would like. Um, I have cut back some of the branches off the um, the grapevine um, this last week, but um, I still think it's um, suffering from the light or lack of light a little bit. Uh, it doesn't seem to be growing quite as well as I expected it to, but uh, that's the ginger. And that's pretty much how we are in the greenhouse at the moment. Um, I have cut back the uh, the grapevine, as you can see here. These are all running all the way down here. Um, so I've, I've cut back a lot of the, uh, the grapevine just to try and um, give the tomatoes a bit more light. As you can see, this tomato here is completely grown out of the window, so I can't even shut the window anymore. But um, as you can see, I've just let this one grow just to see what it's, um, what it's to be like. These these here, I've topped those off, but this this one and this one, as the window was there, I thought I'd just let them grow, see what happens. And uh, they've grown right out the window, and they seemingly, the further up they grow, the stronger they get. So uh, anyway, that's the, uh, the greenhouse. Okay, so I'm going to explain how to do the onions. Now, before you start um, um, tying your onions up into strings, what you need to have is the onion ready, which means it's been dry for a few weeks. Now, if you feel if you feel the onion there, it should feel absolutely perfectly dry. Now, I've had these in the greenhouse um, drying off um, for a couple of three weeks now. Now, these are really nice and dry. There's no moisture there. Don't try and tie them up before um, they're perfectly dried. Otherwise, what you're going to get is uh, when you tie them off, this, this top bit here, which is typically the top bit, uh, the last bit to dry, what you'll get is sort of damp forming there and that's going to cause you problems, fungal problems later. So you need to make sure that all of your onions are nice and dry here at, at the top and then, and then you're ready to go. Next thing you need is a string. Now, I always use this, this sort of white um, um, type string. The reason being is if you use the nylon stuff that you tie the um, tomatoes up with, um, that can that can cut into the um, the onions and you can potentially um, um, sort of cut into the uh, the bottom part of the onion and this bit here sorry or, or at least the top bit here and what that'll do is it'll it'll cut through it and the onions will fall off the string so what I tend to find is this stuff is 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 most certainly the good stuff to use so you know this is only about a pound a reel get it from Wilco's or anywhere like that or any stationery and what you need is two meters of this um, now depending on how many onions you're going to put onto the string. I always make my strings around a metre long. Now I'm, I'm 184 centimetres tall, or six foot, which means if I do that, st stretch my arms out, that's almost, that's almost a metre. No, sorry, almost two metres, should I say. Um, do that again, and then just a bit more, and then I've got basically two metres. So if I do that again, I know I've got two metres worth of string. The last thing you need is a good pair of scissors. So obviously cut the, cut the string off at that point. Now, what, you, what you're actually going to do is form two loops of um, string. So the first thing you do is put the two ends together and then find the other end, obviously pulling them um, um, together like that. So what I've got now is a loop of string. So those are the two ends. So there's the, there's the first loop and there's the two ends of the string. Now if I put them two together, so I've got four pieces of string there, what I end up with is two loops of string. Now what you need to do before you tie anything off is check that they're all the same length. So if you, if you see that, as you can see, they're all the same length. So what I've got is two loops of string here. Yeah, so I've got effectively four pieces of string going up there. It's all one piece of string anyway. And what you need to do then is where the, where the ends come to the loop, what you need to do there is just tie them off. And you need to get the lengths of these four pieces of string, or two pieces of string, 
whichever way you look at it the same. So always make sure that you find the middle. And then all I've done there is just done a like a Staffordshire type knot um, by putting it in and then pull that as short as you can. And then as you can see I've got then that's that's nicely tied and that's going to end up at the bottom. And then the two loops at the top are like that. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is hook that onto the see now what you need is to do it inside a shed or a greenhouse or whatever, I've done it in the greenhouse in the past um, on, on past videos, but what you need is some kind of nail that you can that you can hook that over onto whilst you're putting the onions on. So there's the piece of string um, and there's the end. Uh, so as you can see what I've got now is four pieces of four pieces of string all coming to an end there with a with a knot in. Okay. Now the first thing you need to do is, is put the first onion on. Now <clears throat> the first onion is, is quite possibly the most critical of the lot because what you need to do is you need to tie the first onion in and then all the onions, all the rest of the onions will rest on that. However, they're all tied in, so it's not critical that um, you know you don't if you if you take the bottom onion out, they should all stay in the string anyway. So what you need to do is get the get the string like that and the onion, put the onion, the top of the onion into the string, so as you can see, like that. Okay? Now what I'm gonna do is is if you can see it like that. Well there's the onion through the string, okay? So what I've done is I've bent the, bent the onion over and what I'm going to do is go through here like that and then over on itself so then it's tied on to the bottom of the string. Okay so what you should end up with is the, the onion tied on to the bottom as you can see the, the onions um, sort of completely looped onto the string. Now what you want to do is pull that down as much as you can like that and then with a pair of, a pair of sharp scissors cut the uh, the onion off around half an inch away from the uh, the string, and then you can discard the rest of the onion. So, what we got is the first onion on um, with the string tied around with half an inch. Now you want to you want to leave half an inch on there so it doesn't pull through the string, so don't cut it right off towards the string. But also you don't want to have too much in there because that's the part that's going to hold moisture, um, and that's what's going to cause you problems. So the rest of the onions go on pretty much the same way. Um, between the cockerel. Uh, so what you need to do is get your get your next onion. Obviously, peel off any of these loose um, any of these loose bits off the onion because these are these are not going to help you very much at all. So just just pull all them off, and then the the roots should be pretty much dry now. So you can just sort of pull them away. Now I'll show you exactly the same. I'll show you again in exactly the same way. So to stop the string going twisted, I'm just going to pull all that down to the bottom. Right, okay, so exactly the same way again. So you put the onion through the, 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 the onion top through the string like that. Yeah, now you want to leave um, about, um, so I'll just get that off there. You want to leave about, um, about an inch or two and a half centimeters of the onion top there. And what you're doing is you're going, you're going to bend that over. So there's the, there's the, the onion through, bend that back with your fingers like that, and then you go into the hoop with the onion like that, so I've twisted so that's now twisted around this piece twice effectively, then you go around the other piece and then back through the, the string like that, so what you end up doing is effectively making a figure 8 so you go, oh, hang on, I'll just pull this in and I can explain again so just pull that down like that so it's nice and taut, now the weight of the onion will keep it taut again what you need to do is just cut that off it's about half an inch away from the end of the string, like that. And the more onions you get on there, the easier it becomes to be honest with you. And you get into a bit of a routine of, of you know, just, just do that, not thinking about it, to be honest with you. So the next onion, again, peel off any of the excess. Um, you know, you don't want to peel it off altogether, get the get the roots off. Now, if there's if there's quite a lot of top in there, what you can do is just pull a bit of that off. So obviously you don't want too much on there. Make sure it's nice and dry. Now, this time, both of these onions have gone through that way, so this is why you have four pieces of string. What you want to do now is separate the strings the other way, like that. Yeah. So it was originally you were paired like that. Now what I'm doing is taking one from each, so they're paired differently. Now what this will do is it stops the this is this is one other way, um, or um, 
another way of, of, of this not coming undone. That's why I've got four pieces of string basically. So again, the onion goes in um, about uh, about an inch away from the string like that. That's, a, that, that. that's how much you need. And then fold that bit over. So all I've done is twist it around the string so far. The onion goes through the hoop, round, round the other piece of string like that, and then back through again. And then if you pull that down, pull the string through like that, it will then pull it onto the um, the bottom like that, and then that's now secure. Again, all you need to do is cut off the excess, leave it about half an inch on there. So that's now three onions on the um, on the string. Now, onions are all the same size and shape, um, so you are going to have. Um, it's going to be a little bit more sort of difficult to get it uniform up the string. And the more you do this, the, the easiest way of doing this is put all of the onions of one particular size onto the um, string and then as you get to the top, put some slightly smaller ones on, that's the way I find it. Now, again, that onion went through that two pairs like that, so what I'm going to do is take one strand from each, like that, and, and now every onion that I put on is going to go like that. Now, the onion will end up on the side that you start from, so I want this onion to end up here because there's a space there. So I'm going to put it like that. Okay. Again, an inch. Round that one, round that one, and then back through the hole. As you can see, it's ended up on the same side. And all you need to do is push it, push it down onto the string. Sometimes you need to do that with the string. Hang on, let's put through like that. And there, that that onion is now nice and secure and on that side where there was a gap. And what you need to do is, is, is do that with all the onions so you try and fill all the gaps down the string otherwise you're going to get like sort of gaps in the string if you like. Now every so often it's well worthwhile just, just grabbing the string like that, not to put too much tension on what you're holding it, and just push them down like that and then what that'll do is it'll, it'll A push all the onions down but what it'll also do is it'll tighten all the knots up so uh, they're less likely to come off. So I'll show you one more time. And all you just keep doing is, is basically repeating this. So again, I've taken the tops off, take the roots off, any loose um, bits of skin off the onion. Now this time what I'm going to do is again take the, the opposite two pieces of string, put the top through. Now I want this onion to come out on this side, so I'm going to do it that way. So the onion goes through the string like that. Okay, I'm going to push that down so it's now round that piece of string, through the hole, back round that one, like that, and then back through again, like that, and then push it, push it down on the string. Oh, it's twisted. Push it down on the string like that, and then that'll it'll sit like that. So I don't know if you can see that. But you can see how the, the onion wraps around the, the string twice. So it wraps around that side and then that side. And that will hold it in place. Again, every time you do it, um, cut off the edge. Don't be tempted to pull all the onions on and then cut these off because the onions above it will prevent you getting the scissors in and taking them off. So you need to cut it off every time. And then all you need to do <coughs> is continue to put the onions on in, 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 this same, in, in, in this same way. And as I say, as you, as you do more and more of them, what you'll actually do is you'll get into a rhythm of doing it, like that. So again, just take the opposite two pieces. In fact, what I'm going to do is going to leave them that way because I want it only to sit this side of it now. So the only goes the way you want it to end up, like that. And then around there, around there, and then back around there. Always go around the top. Don't go underneath because you want the you want the weight of the onion to um, to hold the. Um, to hold it in place, so the, the onion should always end up coming off the top if you like. Like that, push it down a little bit more, like that, put off the excess, and that's the first sort of five or six onions on. Now you just keep doing that all the way up the string until the string's completely filled. Now, what you must do, one last tip, is when you put the onions on here, Always check that the onions are okay, which is, which is one of the reasons why you've taken off the outer. Um, I mean, particularly this year because I had some um, sort of fungus on the um, on the leaves. So what I want to make sure is none of the onions are actually damaged. Now I've already started to eat these onions uh, before I've tied them up, 
because uh, basically you can eat them as soon as they uh, come out of the ground. But um, I've, uh, I know full well the actual tubers aren't damaged in any way, shape or form. So I'm quite confident about that. But what you need to do is the same with storing everything when I was telling you before with potatoes or apples or whatever else. If one of these onions is bad, it's going to send the ones by it bad as well. So you need to make sure that whatever you put on here is healthy. If it's not healthy, um, either discard it or just eat it straight away. Um, and then you can, um, you know, because these onions, I intend some of these onions to be on here for almost 12 months. Um, you know, because I, I typically do about, about 10 strings like this. And uh, the onions are um, sort of on the string, or, you know, you know, the last ones that we eat for almost 12 months. I've actually got one just off camera here, which I did this time last year. And um, the, uh, that's, um, you know, still got onions on that we're using now. So, you know, that's been on there for 12 months or so. So again, put it down on the string like that. And then all you, as I say, just, just, just keep, um, Keep on um, sort of building up as you go on now. All the roots are now dried off, so what you can do, as I say, you can either pull the roots off, or what you can do is, as, as soon as you finish like this bottom one here, just go along with the scissors and just trim off the roots. Um, you, you can actually leave them on, to be honest with you, but this just ties this up a little bit, makes it look a bit better. And then these can be these can be a really good gift for people. So if you have got too many onions. You know, one of these can be a really nice gift. They can also be hung up in the um, in the kitchen as like a decorative thing, like garlic can as well. What I would suggest is if you are going to do that, I would I would really select nice onions, and I would uh, make sure you pulled out all of the the outer shell so they're all nice looking onions. If you're going to do it like that, but um, that's the best way of um, storing onions on a string. Now, if you don't um, keep these in the house, what I would suggest you do is keep them in a cool place, obviously dry as well, and um, you don't need to worry too much about light, it can be light or dark, it won't really um, um, you know, make too much difference. Dark is probably better, but uh, and these will store like this for at least 12 months, and um, if you keep them cool, there's no reason why they wouldn't store for any longer than that. Okay, so fundamentally that's what you should end up with, um, all your onions sort of going down. Now you want, some, you want some gaps between them, don't try and pack them so tightly that there's no gaps, because what you want to do, is you want to maintain some airflow into the middle bit here so that the, the actual onions themselves are sort of surrounded by air. Now that, that will stop any sort of moisture or anything like that building up and uh, cause any problems. But fundamentally that's what you should end up with. On, on each of these you've probably got um, two dozen onions, obviously dependent on the size. If the onions are slightly smaller um, you, you know you'll be able to get more on. But I've ended up with about two foot of onions on there and so you end up with about about sort of 12 inches of string at the end and obviously you use that to sort of tie them off. There's no need to uh, put a, to um, um, a knot at the top of the onions because the, basically the weight of the onions will keep them um, tied on there. And as the, as the, uh, the leaves grow, uh, sort of dry even further, that knot will get slightly tighter and the weight of the onions will come down very slightly but it's, it's not really so noticeable. But that's um, how to string onions up. So I hope you found this episode of interest. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of the Tubes on the Garden.